Hello everyone, this is Kevin, your entrepreneur, and let's discuss Uber's sexual harassment culture problem. Because here's the thing, a news story has reported that Amit Singhal, I believe I'm pronouncing that name correctly, has resigned from Uber over sexual assault allegations. Now, here's what's interesting about this um, report, as it were. It's... You would think like, oh, okay, good. So Uber's doing more thorough investigating on their staff and they're fi finding out the people who within their company has actually committed some sexual assault or has been accused of sexual assault and they're getting rid of them, which this can only be a good thing, right? Well, here's the interesting thing about this situation. Amit actually didn't have any sexual assault complaints at Uber. Which means you might be asking now, well, why is he getting canned then? Or why did he resign? Because here's the thing. While he did resign, Travis Kalanick did ask for his resignation. It's Monday, right? Yeah, on Monday. So whatever, Monday the 27th of February, um, Travis Kalanick asked Amit for his resignation. And here's why. Because they started doing more thorough background checks. Now, apparently the initial background check on this guy, and he's the senior vice president, by the way. I just have to mention that before I forget. He worked for Google previously. Now, when they first did their initial background check, Google HR didn't tell them why he was no longer at the company. And they didn't find anything that suggested he had any of these allegations in the past, so they hired him. Well, they went back to Google, and I don't know what changed this time, but Google told him that he had left the company because there were sexual harassment claims made there. Now, the person who made the claims didn't go public, and they were settled apparently, and he was no longer with the company, and therefore Google HR was not legally bound to tell them anything. And you know what? There's a reason why companies legally are not supposed to tell your next employer why you were fired, because that is not their business, quite frankly. And I know this because uh, I successfully sued a company We'll just call them Fry's Electronics. Because after I was wrongfully terminated from them, well, the first thing was I was wrongfully terminated and I sued them for wrongfully terminating me. And the case went so badly for them, they didn't even show up at the court date when it was all said and done. And I won some money. But when I was going to apply for other jobs, they were calling Fry's and Fry's was telling them the reason I was fired, which wasn't even the real reason. That's why I brought them to court in the first place. And so I know for a fact, legally, companies are not supposed to defame you for future employers. The future employers, they're calling, and the only thing HR can tell them legally is, did this person work for them? Now, that said, just for a future word of caution to people who get fired for less than flattering reasons, if your new potential employer asks them, do you have anything to say about this, this person? They could, in a, a roundabout way, not recommend they hire you by simply saying no comment. If they say he was a pl pleasure to work with or, you know, yeah, he was fine. If they give some sort of recommendation, then you're good. But if they say no comment because they just cannot tell them why you were let go, well, uh, you're probably not going to get that job. But getting back to a mint. So this is an interesting development in the... Um, uber sexual culture harassment issue because some people are going to look at this as a positive thing oh they took a closer look at their employees and for doing something in a previous job he's being let go so that he potentially does not do it again which that's one of those things that it sounds good but ethically that's actually not very sound believe it or not because again he hasn't done anything has not done anything, and you can't start firing people for things that they might potentially do. I mean, where would Target or Walmart be if every employee eventually had to quit after a year because there was a potential they might eventually take money from the cash register? Is it a possibility? Yes. But you can't fire based on that assumption. Now, some would argue, well, he had... A precedent and yes he did well now he has an illegal obligation to sue uber for revealing that information you, you know you just can't do that um for all we know you know i'm gonna play devil's advocate here 
he um, probably did get in trouble at Google. And here's the thing, losing a big position like that will usually, can sometimes wake you up. So if there was no complaints at Uber, then Uber has no grounds to fire him. They have no grounds to ask him to resign. If they give him a severance package to leave, maybe it was worth it more for him to, you know, resign than to fight it. But that, um, that creates an ugly precedent. It really does. Here's the thing. And here's the other thing, I should say. Um, going through your past, the employer's, <laughs> the employee's past and finding out things that could potentially mean that they, you have a problem in the future is actually not how you fix the sexual harassment culture that Uber has created. You do it by changing policy. You do it by changing the way people work. You change it by altering the way the employees work with each other. You change the competition rules so that maybe teams work better together than against. You have to change the culture because here's the thing. If you bring new people in, people will try get try to get away with what they can. When you bring people in, if the culture has not changed, they are still going to try to do it, even if they've never done it before. So that's my personal opinion. Um, do I feel bad for Amit? I don't know. I mean, on one hand, maybe you really don't want to be part of Uber anyway. But by that same token, he didn't do anything wrong in this job, and therefore he should not have been asked to resign, in my opinion. Um, whether or not he might have eventually done something, you know what, I can't make that call. Um, I think this is a situation to show that Uber, even when they're trying to do the right thing, they don't always do the right thing. Actually, I'm going to take it a step further. This isn't doing the right thing. This is just trying to get ahead of a potential problem when the real problems are so rooted in the philosophy of the company that you you really have to dig deep to pull them out. And Uber is just trimming. Those weeds are going to come back. So, you know what? Amit, I wish you best of luck. Um, you know, it's not easy, but maybe you're better off not with this company in the first place. So, anyway, that's my thoughts. What do you guys think? Do you think Uber did the right thing? Do you think this was an overreaction? I'd like to know. Comment below. Like, favorite, share, subscribe. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.